factory in the Wuhan. The Wuhan you left was uh, different from the Wuhan you came back to. You left in February, you came back in April. Yeah, so we, we left the Wuhan around the 21st when the coronavirus was about, month. but I think- 21st of what? 21st of January, we left Wuhan. Okay, okay. so it's just really picking up then. Aye, so then at that dire stage, it was kind of picking up, and I don't think, well, the way that we looked at it was, okay, this is good, we're getting out of Wuhan, well, this is all kind of going on. Yeah. By the stage we come back, it'll be kind of sorted, and I mean, everybody then, you know, everybody knew how wrong we were, how knew how wrong we were going to be. So you arrived back in April, what was the difference? So we arrived back a much quieter, a much quieter, you know, quite a, quite a lively city all the time, but we came back and it was so much more quieter. Not really that many people about, nobody really on the streets. Even after we came back on the 8th of April, it still took a couple of weeks before I think people got that kind of feeling of comfort where that if they left their home and went into a public place with strangers, you know, that they felt that they could be safe with the restrictions and the safety guides that the Wuhan government had set up. Was there any, very quiet. Was there any additional checking as you entered the Wuhan city limits, as it were? Were you tested again? Were you, did they ask who you were? Or was it just free travel between Hangzhou yeah. and, and Wuhan? No, every, everywhere, you, everywhere you go, any public area, whether it's train, bus, uh, sh- uh, most shops, shopping malls, parks, public parks, uh, restaurants, you have to show your QR code, which then they scan and they can see where you've been and that you filled in the application that says, yes, you are healthy. And then also they take your temperature to make sure. So I think anything above 37.5 or 37.6, they refuse to allow you in. And, you know, I think you're told, right, you have to go to the hospital. They, they, they uh, tell the local authorities, they say a person's temperature is high because they don't want to run. They don't want to, you know, they've done such great work to get from where they were to where they are now. And they don't want to ruin that there. So I think if there's even a slight opportunity that you might have it, they'll send you to the hospital. So, so when you went to the pub the other night, they took your temperature at the door, did they? Yep. So they take, they scan your QR code and they take your temperature at the door. You're not allowed into most any restaurant that's a public place or any pub or anywhere. You're not allowed to go there without being without your QR code. Now everybody has to have their acid test done. So if you haven't done your acid test, you won't be allowed in. It comes up on your QR code that you've done it, and that then your that your that your score is you know that you're green. And so if you don't if you haven't done your acid test, you can't go anywhere. You have to get that to go anywhere because now your QR code shows that there. So um, you, you link the both of them together. Uh, 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 is, uh, very far from normal. I take it. I take it. People are still masked up and they're wearing gloves. Are they? And hazmat suits. I think for yeah, uh, but hazmat suits are for mostly um, workers within the hospital. Anybody who deals directly with people who might have have had it or might have it now. Most people, it comes to masks and gloves. Uh, but there are also some people who wear kind of like a guard, uh, a plastic see-through guard mask, yeah, in public areas. But yeah. the biggest one is the mask. You know the way. I think uh, anywhere you go, everybody wears a mask. You can't. And it's al- it's almost impossible to leave your home without wearing a mask and without being told off. Now, when talking to your parents when this first uh, broke and they were very worried about you, but do you feel actually safe or do you feel afraid to be in Wuhan, which is a name known throughout the world now and associated with with uh, COVID nineteen? Um, th- to be honest, well, I mean, when it first broke out, it was just about playing it as safe as possible with resources that we had. I mean, at one stage, it was like, okay, we're in Vietnam, this is going well. But obviously, it was then the coronavirus started to travel and spread very quickly. So that was then becoming more and more dangerous. And we just thought, right, where is it that we can go? And given that my girlfriend is Chinese, and we were very limited options except for going back to China because I had my visa to go back. We just thought, look, we'll go back. We won't go back to Wuhan, obviously, because we can't and it's not safe. So we'll go to the second safest place, which we thought then was Guangzhou, that we would get back into China. So that's what we did. There was, I mean, there was always the talk, you know, we could, you know, I could go home. We could try and get a visa for Victoria, my girlfriend, to come back. Where else could we go? But at the end of the day, just try and stay as far away from Wuhan as we could while being getting back into China. So we thought Guangzhou at that stage then was the best bet because 
at the time, Guangzhou was fairly low down on the list for um, you know, to, you know, lots or for the coronavirus itself in terms of uh, their policies weren't as strict as Wuhan because there was less, you know, they they there was less people uh, getting the virus there. So people sort of talk about almost like being on a war voting against uh, COVID nineteen. Do you feel that? Do you feel that in Wuhan that you know everybody's united against this? That there's a real civic city community effort to stop uh, the the virus and that they really are in this together. Yeah, I do. I a hundred percent believe. I mean, everybody, you know, doesn't matter whether you're working in a hospital or even just a, a you know a job, just working in a shop, or, and and you see Chinese and foreigners all alike. We all respect and are very proud. You know, Wuhan is the second home for me. We're very proud of the, the effort that everybody's put forward, and we we are continuing. I mean, it's still far from over, so everybody still has a long while to go before we see a typical normal day in Wuhan before the coronavirus has spread.